Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. I am sitting here with the Kant Yatra. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm a Londoner in the, in the other room doing seva. 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 is a lucky number. So we're here in the Wisteria, Wisteria College, formerly called Cottage, because there's a lot of learning going on here. Halfway between Folkestone and Canterbury in the land of Kent. I took a little tour this afternoon. I went over and got registered at the NHS in Hythe, which is quite an upscale place and uh, beautiful coastline, beautiful place, it's just lovely. And it's now we're making it transcendental with this reading every day. And uh, even Shirley recognizes that the at atmosphere is changing. Shirley is the owner of this place. All right, welcome to all of you out there in cyberspace, wherever you are. Uh, I'm just, I don't know how to say it, except that the pleasure is increasing uh, more and more. It doesn't seem like it's ever going to stop. I hope it doesn't. And this is going to be my last reading here, but we'll meet you tomorrow night. Uh, not tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we'll be on the plane, uh, sleeping probably during this time. And then... Uh, the next night we'll be in Houston, Texas, and we'll meet you all there to continue this uh, journey to uh, Goloka Vrindavan with a few side, you know, different cantos and different planets and different personalities of Godhead taking a little stroll to the Samam Bonam of Krishna's pastimes in the 10th canto. Right now we're in the 3rd canto and Krishna has kindly agreed to come and speak to us as uh, his incarnation of Lord Kapiladev. Uh, but before we do that, let's associate with Srila Sanatan Goswami. You know, when you hear these, the prayers and the uh, verses, and the pastimes of these personalities, the sound is not ordinary sound. It's not different from the personalities. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada in his purports will say something very charming like, and it was very kind of Narada Muni to appear, <laughs> you know, in this part of the Bhagavatam. So let's hear and associate with Sanatan Goswami, the senior disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's explaining to us what the Srimad Bhagavatam is. It goes like this Sarva Shastabdi Piyusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja. Sarvalokaika Drik Prada. <clears throat> o nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvandotita Ditya. Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvadasavasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you 
who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Mareka bando matsangin madguro man mahadana manistadaga mad bhagya mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy. I bow down to you. Your things are on the table. Right there, yeah. Asadu, sadu ta dayin, ati nicho tatakara, hanamun chakadachin mam, prem narit kanta yospura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please le never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We reach the thirtieth chapter of the third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, the instructions of Kapila Dev in devotional service. And we're beginning with text six. Such satisfaction with one's standard of living is due to deep-rooted attraction for body, wife, home, children, animals, wealth, and friends. In such association, the conditioned soul thinks himself quite perfect. Purport. This so-called perfection of human life is a concoction. Revolutionary. Therefore, it is said that the materialist, however materially qualified he may be, is worthless because he is hovering on the mental plane, which will drag him again to the material existence of temporary life. Such a person is always sure to glide down again to material life. Huh? One who acts on the mental... We have a fact-checker over on the table. <laughs> Good thing we have a fact-checker. He, te he teaches in the MIHE in Mayapur, so... Welcome aboard. I'm going to read the whole purport again, just for your pleasure. This so-called perfection of human life is a concoction. Therefore, it is said that the materialist, however materially qualified he may be, is worthless because he is hovering on the mental plane which will drag him again to the material existence of temporary life. One who acts on the mental plane cannot get promotion to the spiritual. Such a person is always sure to glide down again to material life. In the association of so-called society, friendship and love, the conditioned soul appears completely satisfied. Text 7. Although he is always burning with anxiety, such a fool always performs all kinds of mischievous activities with a hope which is never to be fulfilled in order to maintain his so-called family in society. We went out yesterday, you know, anyway, to do some business. And we went to this mall and went down a high street. My God, it's like right after Christmas. Everybody should be like, I, ah, and everybody's like, it was amazing. The, 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 their eyes were so full of fear, you know, and, and downtrodden, they looked downtrodden. You know, when you see that, you, you have to do something. At least you have to try to do something. 
to distribute this Bhagavatam is the answer, as we are now experiencing at the moment. Purport. It, it is said that, is, that it is easier to maintain a great empire than to maintain a small family, especially in these days when the influence of Kali Yuga is so strong that everyone is harassed and full of anxiety because of accepting the false presentation of Maya's family. The family we maintain is created by Maya. It is the perverted reflection of the family in Krishna Loka. In Krishna Loka, there are also family, friends, society, father and mother. Everything is there, but they are eternal. Here, as we change bodies, our family relationships also change. Sometimes we are in a family of human beings, some are in a family of demigods, sometimes a family of cats, and, or sometimes a family of dogs. Family, society, and friendship are flickering, and so they are called asat. It is said that as long as we are attached to this asat, temporary, non-existing society and family, we are always full of anxieties. The materialists do not know that the family, society, and friendship here in this material world are only shadows, and thus they become attached. Naturally, their hearts are always burning, but in spite of all inconvenience, they still work to maintain such false families because they have no information of the real family association with Krishna. This is, this is Krishna's family. Look at people from all over the world, all different kinds. Wonderful. Text 8. He gives heart and senses to a woman who falsely charms him with maya. He enjoys solitary, solitary embraces and talking with her and he is enchanted by the sweet words of the small children. Purport. Family life within the kingdom of illusory energy, maya, is just like a prison for the eternal living entity. In prison, a prisoner is shackled by iron chains and iron bars. Similarly, a conditioned soul is shackled by the charming beauty of a woman, by her solitary embraces and talks of so-called love, and by the sweet words of his small children. Thus he forgets his real identity, unless they're in a mall and the kids are screaming like anything, Daddy, give me this. No, go away. Give me that. Give me this. Give me that. Right? We all did it. We're still doing it, actually. In this verse, the words strinam, asitinam, indicate that womanly love is just to agitate the man, the mind of a man. Actually, in the material world, there is no love. Oh, that's a that's a heart. Oh, that's a heart. That's a heart burner. Both the woman and the man are interested in their sense gratification. For sense gratification, a woman creates an illusory love, and the man becomes enchanted by such false love and forgets his real duty. When there are children as a result of such a combination, the next attraction is to the sweet words of the children. The love of the woman at home and the talk of the children make one a secure prisoner and thus he cannot leave his home. Such a person is termed in Vedic language a grihamedi, which means one whose center of attraction is home. Grihasta refers to one who lives with family, wife, and children, but whose real purpose of living is to develop Krishna consciousness. One is therefore They did again. Pushed the wrong button. One is therefore advised to become a grihasta and not a grihamedi. The grihasta's concern is to get out of the family life created by illusion and enter into real family life with Krishna. 
whereas the Grihamedes business is to repeatedly chain himself to so-called family life in one life after another and perpetually remain in the darkness of Maya. Text 9. The attached householder remains in his family life, which is full of diplomacy, politics, and constantly spreading miseries. <laughs> Restricted in his acts of sense gratification, he acts just to counteract his miseries. And if he can, and if he can successfully counteract such miseries, he thinks that he is happy for a moment. Oops, that was my edit, sorry. Purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, the personality of Godhead himself certifies the material world as an impermanent place that is full of miseries. There is no question of happiness in this material world, either individually or in terms of family, society, or country. If something is going on in the name of happiness, that is also illusion. Here in this material world, happiness means successful counteraction of the effects of distress. The material world is so made that unless one becomes a clever diplomat, his life will be a failure. Not to speak of human society, even the society of lower animals, the birds and bees, cleverly manages its bodily demands of eating, sleeping, and mating. Human society competes nationally or individually, and in the attempt to be successful, the entire human society becomes full of diplomacy. Brexit or no? No. Yes. No. Maybe. We should always remember that in spite of all diplomacy and all intelligence in the struggle for our existence, everything will end in a second by the supreme will. Therefore, all our attempts to become happy in this material world are simply a delusion offered by Maya. Text 10. He secures money by committing violence here and there, and although he employs it in the service of his family, he himself eats only a little portion of the food thus purchased. And he goes to hell for those for whom he earned money in such an irregular way. Purport. There is a Bengali proverb. The person for whom I have stolen accuses me of being a thief. The family members for whom an attached person acts in so many criminal ways are never satisfied. In illusion, an attached person serves such family members, and by serving them, he is destined to enter into hellish life, hellish condition of life. For example, a thief steals something to maintain his family, and he is caught and imprisoned. This is the sum and substance of material existence, an attachment to material society, friendship, and love. Although an attached family man is always engaged in getting money by hook or by crook for the maintenance of his family, he cannot enjoy more than what he could consume even without such criminal activities. A man who eats eight ounces of foodstuffs may have to maintain a big family and earn money by any means to support that family, but he himself is not offered more than what he can eat. And sometimes, he eats the remnants that are left after his family members are fed. Even by earning money by unfair means, he cannot enjoy life for himself. That is called the covering illusion of Maya. The process of illusory service to society, country, and community is exactly the same everywhere. The same principle is applicable even to big national leaders. A national leader who is very great in serving his country is sometimes killed by his countrymen because of irregular service. In other words, one cannot satisfy his dependents by this illusory service, although one cannot get out of the service because servant is his constitutional 
position. A living entity is constitutionally part and parcel of the Supreme Being, but he forgets that he has to render service to the Supreme Being and diverts his attention to serving others. This is called Maya. By serving others, by serving others, he falsely thinks that he is master. The head of the family thinks of himself as the master of the family. Or the leader of a nation thinks of himself as the master of the nation. Whereas actually, he is serving. And by serving Maya, he is gradually going to hell. Therefore, a sane man should come to the point of Krishna consciousness and engage in the service of the Supreme Lord, applying his whole life, all of his wealth, his entire intelligence and his full power of speaking. Text 11. When he suffers reverses in his occupation, he tries again and again to improve himself. But when he is baffled in all attempts, he is ruined. He accepts money from others because of excessive greed. Text 12. Thus the unfortunate man, unsuccessful in maintaining his family members, is bereft of all beauty. He always thinks of his failure, grieving very deeply. Seeing him unable to support them, his wife and others do not treat him with the same respect as before. Even as miserly farmers do not accord the same treatment to their old and worn out oxen. Purport. Not only is the in the present age, but from time immemorial, no one is like an old man who is unable to earn in the family. Even in the modern age, in some communities or states, the old men are given poison so that they will die as soon as possible. In some cannibalistic communities, in some cannibalistic communities, the old grandfather is sportingly killed and a feast is held in which his body is eaten. Whoa! <laughs> the example is given that a farmer does not like an old bull who has ceased to work. Similarly, when an attached person in family life becomes old and is unable to earn, he is no longer liked by his wife, sons, daughters, and other kinsmen. And he is consequently neglected. What to speak of not being given respect? It is judicious, therefore, to give up family attachment before one attains old age and take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should employ himself in the Lord's service so that the Supreme Lord can take charge of him and he will not be neglected by his so-called kinsmen. 14. It's like a little bit like a ice bucket of ice water on the head when you're a little tipsy. Text 14. The foolish family man does not become averse to family life, although he is maintained by those whom he once maintained. Deformed by the influence of old age, he prepares himself to meet ultimate death. Just walk into any waiting room of an NHS, what do they call it, clinic? Sur sur surgery, no. Yes, yes. Surgery. yeah, surgery. I just went to one today. I saw with my own eyes. What are, you, what are you saying here? Purport. Family attraction is so strong that even if one is neglected by family members in his old age, he cannot give up family affection and remains at home just like a dog. In the Vedic way of life, one has to give up family life while he is still strong. It is advised that before getting too weak and becoming baffled in material activities and before becoming diseased, one should give up family life and engage oneself completely 
in service of the Lord for the remaining days of his life. It is enjoined, therefore, in the Vedic scriptures that as soon as one passes 50 years of age, he must give up family life and live alone in the forest. Because that's not practical for that age. Prabhupada explained to us very clearly, in this age now, in this time, it's not practical. Better to stay and become devotees. After preparing himself fully, he should become a sannyasi to distribute the knowledge of spiritual life to each and every home or cottage. <laughs> Text 15. Thus he remains at home just like a pet dog and eats whatever is so negligently given to him. Afflicted with many illnesses such as dyspepsia and loss of appetite, he eats only very small morsels of food and becomes an invalid who cannot work anymore. Purport. Before meeting death, one sh is sure to become diseased, invalid. And when he is neglected by his family members, his life becomes less than a dog's because he is put into so many miserable conditions. Vedic literature is enjoined, therefore, that before the arrival of such miserable conditions, one should leave home and die without the knowledge of his family members. If a man leaves home and dies without his family's knowing, that is considered to be a glorious death. But an attached family man wants his family members to carry him in a great procession after his death. And although he will not be able to see how the procession goes, <laughs> he still desires that his body be taken gorgeously in procession <laughs> and dressed up you know, in, the, in the finest. Thus he is happy without even knowing where he has to go when he leaves his body for the next life. Stark reality. 16. In that diseased condition, one's eyes bulge due to the pressure of air from within and his glands become congested with mucus. He has difficulty breathing and upon exhaling and inhaling, he produces a sound like gr, gr, a rattling within the throat. 17. In this way he comes under the clutches of death and lies down, surrounded by lamenting friends and relatives. And although he wants to speak with them, he no longer can because he is under the control of time. Purport. For formality's sake, when a man is lying on his deathbed, his relatives come to him and sometimes they cry very loudly addressing the dying man, Oh, my father! Oh, my friend! Oh, my husband! In that pitiable condition, the dying man wants to speak with them and instruct them of his desires. But because he is fully under the control of the time factor, death, he cannot express himself and that causes him inconceivable pain. He is all... He is already in a painful condition because of disease and his glands and throat are choked with mucus. He is already in a very difficult position and when he is addressed by his relatives in that way, his grief increases. 18. Thus the man who, enga who engaged with uncontrolled senses in maintaining a family dies in a great grief, seeing his relatives crying. He dies most pathetically, in great pain, and without consciousness. Purport. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that at the time of death, one will be absorbed in the thoughts which he cultivated during his lifetime. A person who has no other idea than to properly maintain his family members must have family affairs in his last thoughts. That is the natural sequence for a common man. The common man does not know the destiny of his life. He is simply busy in his flash of life, maintaining his family. At the last stage, 
No one is satisfied with how he has improved the family economic condition. Everyone thinks he could not provide sufficiently. Because of his deep family affection, he forgets his main duty of controlling the senses and improving his spiritual consciousness. Sometimes a dying man entrusts the family affairs to either his son or some relative saying, I am going, please look after the family. He does not know where he is going. But even at the time of death, he is anxious about how his family will be maintained. Sometimes it is seen that a dying man requests the physician to increase his life at least for a few years so that the family maintenance plan which he has begun can be completed. These are the, natural, these are, these are the material diseases of the conditioned soul he completely forgets about his real engagement to become Krishna conscious and is always serious about planning to maintain his family, although he changes families one after another. 19. At death, he sees the messengers of the Lord of death before, come before him, their eyes full of wrath, and in great fear he passes stool in urine. Purport. There are two kinds of transmigration of a living entity after passing away from the present body. One kind of transmigration is to go to the controller of sinful activities, who is known as Yamaraj, and the other is to go to the higher planets, up to Vaikuntha. Here Lord Kapila describes how persons engaged in activities of sense gratification to maintain a family are treated by the messengers of, messengers of Yamaraj called Yamadutas. At the time of death, the Yamadutas become the custodians of those persons who have strongly gratified their senses. They take charge of the dying man and take him to the planet where Yamaraj resides. The conditions there are described in the following verses. Once I was distributing books in Chicago, in, well, it's called O'Hare Field, but we called it O'Hare Field because it was spelled O-H-A-R-E. So Prabhupada told one of the devotees to go to the management of the airport and ask them to change the name to O'Hare Krishna Field. <laughs> he was serious, and they did. Of course, they didn't change the name, but we know that Hare meant. But anyway, we were there distributing books, and we happened to be distributing the sixth canto, first can first a volume and you know what's on the cover you know Ajamil is there the, on his deathbed and these hideous looking creatures you know have ro ropes of subtle ropes and they're pulling him out of his subtle body by force so we were, I was I wasn't doing it I, there was another devotee who met someone and he was showing him the book, you know, and going through the pictures, as we usually do. He got to that picture, and all of a sudden, the person started screaming at the top of his lungs, right in the middle of the airport. So the devotee sat him down, he said, trying to pacify him, you know. He's going to bring people, and they're going to think something bad happened or something. So finally, he sat down, and he got his, you know, got himself, gathered his wits, and he said, I just got out of the hospital and I had a near-death experience and I saw these persons come into my room to take me. Yeah. And then, I don't remember exactly how it happened or what was said, but he got on the next plane, changed his ticket, got on the next plane to Miami, Florida and joined the temple. <laughs> just like that. Sankirtan Ki Jai. Text 20. As a criminal is arrested for punishment by the constables of the state, a person engaged in criminal sense gratification is similarly arrested by the Yamadutas, who bind him by the neck with strong rope and cover his subtle body so that he may, un so that he may undergo severe punishment. It purport. Every living entity is covered by a subtle and gross body. The subtle body 
is the covering of mind, ego, intelligence, and consciousness. It is said in the scriptures that the constables of Yamaraj cover the subtle body of the culprit and take him to the abode of Yamaraj to be punished in a way that he is able to tolerate. He does not die from this punishment because if he died, then who would suffer the punishment? It is not the business of the constables of Yamaraj to put one to death. In fact, it is not possible to kill a living entity because factually he is eternal. He simply has to suffer the consequences of his activities of sense gratification. The process of punishment is explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Formerly, the king's men would take a criminal in a boat in the middle of the river. They would dunk him by grasping a bunch of his hair and thrusting him completely underwater. And when he was almost suffocated, the king's constables would take him out of the water and allow him to breathe for some time. And then they would again dunk him in the water to suffocate. Sound familiar? They call it waterboarding in America. And they still do it. This sort of punishment is inflicted upon the forgetful soul by Yamaraj, as will be described in the following verses. Text 21. While carried by the constables of Yamaraj, he is overwhelmed and trembles in their hands. While passing on the road, he is bitten by dogs, and he can remember the sinful activities of his life, and thus he is, he is thus terribly distressed. Purport. It appears from this verse that while passing from this planet to the planet of Yamaraj, the culprit arrested by Yamaraj's constables meets many dogs which bark and bite just to remind him of his criminal activities of sense gratification. It is said in Bhagavad Gita that one becomes almost blind and is bereft of all sense when he is infuriated by the desire for sense gratification. He forgets everything. Kamais, Taistaya, Ritigyana. One is bereft of all intelligence when, when he is too attracted by sense gratification. And he forgets that he has to suffer the consequences also. Here is the chance for recounting his activities of sense gratification. Here, the chance for recounting his activities of sense gratification is given by the dogs engaged by Yamaraj. While we live in the gross body, such activities of sense gratification are encouraged even by modern government regulations. In every state, all over the world, such activities are encouraged by the government in the form of birth control. Women are supplied pills and they are allowed to go to a clinical laboratory to get assistance for abortions. This is going on as a result of sense gratification. Actually, sex life is meant for beginning a good child but because people have no control of the senses and there is no institution to train them to control the senses, the poor fellows fall victim to the criminal offenses of sense gratification and they are punished after death as described in these pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Text 22. Under the scorching sun, the criminal has to pass through roads of hot sand with forest fires on both sides. He is whipped on the back by the constables because of his inability to walk, and he is afflicted by hunger and thirst. But unfortunately, there is no drinking water, no shelter, and no place for rest on the road. 23. While passing on the, that road to the abode of Yamaraj, he falls down in fatigue, and sometimes he becomes unconscious, but he is forced to rise again. In this way, he is very quickly brought to the presence of Yamaraj. Thus he, is, thus he has to pass 93,000 yojans within two or three moments. And, there, and then he is at once engaged in the torturous punishment for which he is destined to suffer. One yojana is calculated to be eight miles and he has to pass along a road which is therefore as much as 792,000 miles. Such a long distance is passed over within a few moments only. The subtle body is covered by the constables so that the living entity can pass such a long distance quickly and at the same time t 
tolerate the suffering. This covering, although material, is of such fine elements that material scientists cannot discover what the coverings are made of. To pass 792,000 miles within a few moments seems wonderful to the modern space travelers. They have, been so, they have so far traveled at a speed of 18,000 miles per hour, but here we see that a criminal passes 792,000 miles within a few seconds only, although the process is not spiritual, but material. 25. He is placed in the midst of burning pieces of wood and his limbs are set on fire. Whoa. In some cases he is made to, made to eat his own flesh or to have it eaten by others. Purport. From this verse through the next three verses, the description of punishment will be narrated. The first description is that the criminal has to eat his own flesh burning with fire or allow others like himself who were present there to eat. In the last great war, people in concentration camps sometimes ate their own stool so that there is no wonder that in the Yama, 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 Yama Sadan, Yama Sadana, the abode of Yamaraj, one who, was, uh, who has had one who had a very enjoyable life eating others' flesh has to eat his own. Text 26. His entrails are pulled out by the hounds and vultures of hell, even though he is still alive to see it. And he is subjected to torment by serpents, scorpions, gnats, and other creatures that bite him. This is all going on in a subtle plane. Like we have dreams sometimes and something horrible will happen or something very nice will happen and it happens in an instant but it seems in the dream like it's going on for a long time. Translation. Next his limbs are lopped off and torn asunder by elephants. He is hurled down from hilltops, hilltops and he is also held captive either in water or in a cave. Men and women whose lives were built upon indulgent and in illicit sex life are put into many kinds of miserable conditions in the hells known as Tamisra, Anda Tamrisa, and Rorava. Purport. Materialistic life is based on sex life. The existence of all the materialistic people who are undergoing severe tribulation in the struggle for existence is based on sex. Therefore, in the Vedic civilization, sex life is allowed only in a restricted way. It is for the married couple and only for begetting children. But when sex life is indulged in for sense gratification illegally and illicitly, both the man and woman await severe punishment in this world or after death. In this world also they are punished by virulent diseases like syphilis and gonorrhea. And, then, and in the next life, we see in this passage of Srimad Bhagavatam that they are, put, they are put into different kinds of hellish conditions to suffer. In Bhagavad Gita, first chapter, illicit sex, is, sex life is also very much condemned. And it is said that one who produces children by illicit sex life is sent to hell. It is confirmed here in the Bhagavatam that such offenders are put into hellish conditions of life in Tamisra, Anda, Tamisra, and Rorava. Twenty nine. Lord Kapila continued, My dear mother, it is sometimes said that we experience hell or heaven on this planet, for hellish punishments are sometimes visible on this planet also. Purport. Sometimes unbelievers do not accept these statements of Scripture regarding hell. They disregard such authorized descriptions. Lord Kapila therefore confirms them by saying that these hellish conditions are also visible on this planet. It is not that they are only on the planet where Yamaraj lives. On the planet of Yamaraj, the sinful man is given the chance to practice living in the hellish conditions which he will have to endure in the next life. And then he is given a chance to take birth on another planet to continue his hellish life. For example, if a man is to be punished to remain in hell and eat stool and urine, then first of all he practices such habits on the planet of Yamaraj, and then he is given a particular type of body 
that every hog so that he can eat stool and think that he is enjoying life. It is stated previously that in any hellish condition, the conditioned soul thinks he is happy. Otherwise, it would not be possible for him to suffer hellish life. Text 30. After leaving this body, the man who maintained himself and his family members by sinful activities suffers a hellish life and his relatives suffer also. Purport. The mistake of modern civilization is that man does not believe in the next life. But whether he believes or not, the next life is there, and one has to suffer if one does not lead a responsible life in terms of the injunctions of authoritative scriptures like the Vedas and Puranas. Species lower than human beings are not responsible for their actions because they are unable to act in a certain way. But in the developed life of human consciousness, if one is not responsible for his activities, then he is sure to get a hellish life as described herein. Text 31. He goes to the darkest region, regions of hell after quitting the present body, and the money he acquired by envying other living entities is the passage money with which he leaves, leaves this world. Purport. When a man earns money by unfair means and maintains his family and himself with that money, the money is enjoyed by many members of the family, but he alone goes to hell. A person who enjoys life by earning money or by envying another's life and who enjoys with family and friends will have to enjoy alone the resultant sinful reactions occurred from such violent and illicit life. For example, if a man secures some money by killing someone and with that money maintains his family, those who enjoyed the black money earned by him are also partially responsible and are also sent to hell but he who is the leader is especially punished. The result of material enjoyment is that one takes with him the sinful reactions only and not the money. The money he earned is left in this world and he takes only the reaction. In this world also, if a person acquires some money by murdering someone, the family is not hanged, although its members are sinfully contaminated. But the man who commits the murder and maintains his family is himself hanged as a murderer. The direct offender is more responsible for sinful activities than the indirect enjoyer. The great learned scholar Chanakya Pandit says, therefore, that whatever one has in his possession had better be spent for the cause of Sat or the Supreme Personality of Godhead because one cannot take his possessions with him. They remain here, and they will be lost. Either, either we leave the money, or the money leaves us, but we will be separated. The best use of money, as long as it is within our possession, is to spend it to acquire Krishna consciousness. Text 32. Thus, by the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the maintainer of kinsmen, is put into hellish condition to suffer for his sinful activities like a man who has lost his wealth. Purport. The example set herein is that the sinful person suffers just like a man who has lost his wealth. The human form of body is achieved by the conditioned soul after many, many births and, it, and is a very valuable asset. Instead of utilizing this life to get liberation, if one uses it simply for the purpose of maintaining a so-called family and therefore performs foolish and unauthorized action, he is compared to a man who has lost his wealth and who, upon losing it, laments. When wealth, when wealth is lost, there is no use lamenting. But as long as there is wealth, one has to utilize it properly and thereby gain eternal profit. It may be argued that when a man leaves his money earned by such sinful, by, by sinful activities, he also leaves his sinful activities here with his money. But it is especially mentioned herein 
that by superior arrangement, daivina saditam, although the man leaves behind him his sinful earned, sinfully earned money, he carries the effect of it. When a man steals some money, if he is caught and agrees to return it, he is not freed from the criminal punishment. By the law of the state, even though he returns the money, he has to undergo the punishment. Similarly, the money earned by a criminal process may be left by the man when dying, but by superior arrangement he carries with him the effect, and therefore he has to suffer hellish life. Text 33. Therefore, a person who is very eager to maintain his family and kinsmen simply by black methods certainly goes to the darkest region of hell, which is known as Anda Tamisra. The three words in this verse are very significant. Kevalena means only by black methods. Adharmena means unrighteous or irreligious. And Kutumba Barina means family maintenance. Maintaining one's family is certainly the duty of a householder, but one should be eager to earn his livelihood by the prescribed method as stated in the scriptures. In Bhagavad Gita it is described that the Lord has divided the social system into four classifications of castes or varnas according to quality and work. Apart from Bhagavad Gita, in every society, a man is known according to his quality and work. For example, when a man is constructing wooden furniture, he is called a carpenter, and a man who works with an anvil and iron is called a blacksmith. Similarly, a man who is engaged in the medical or engineering fields has a particular duty and designation. All these human activities have been divided by the Supreme Lord into four varnas named Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. In Bhagavad Gita and in other Vedic literatures, the specific duties of the Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra are mentioned. One should work honestly according to his qualification. He should not earn his livelihood unfairly by means for which he is not qualified. If a Brahmana who works as a priest so that he may enlighten his followers with the spiritual way of life is not qualified as a priest, then he is cheating the public. One should earn by such one should not earn by such unfair means. The same is applicable to a chatriya or a vaisha. It is especially mentioned that the means of livelihood of those who are trying to advance in Krishna consciousness must be very fair and uncomplicated. Here it is mentioned that he who earns his livelihood by unfair means, Kevalena, is sent to the darkest hellish region. Otherwise, if one maintains his family by prescribed methods and honest means, there is no objection to one's being a, fa a family man. Text 34 Having gone through all the miserable hellish conditions and having passed in a regular order through the lowest forms of animal life prior to human birth and having thus been purged of his sins, one is reborn again as a human being on this earth. Purport. Just as a prisoner who has undergone, undergone tr troublesome prison life is set free again, the person who is always engaged in impious and mischievous activities is put into hellish conditions, and when he has undergone different hellish lives, namely those of lower animals like cats, dogs, and hogs, by the gradual process of evolution, he again comes back as a human being. In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that even though a person engaged in the practice of the yoga system may not finish perfectly and may fall down for some reason or other, his next life as a human being is guaranteed. It is stated that such a person who has fallen from the path of yoga practice is given a chance in his next life to take birth in a very rich family or in a very pious family. It is interpreted that rich family refers to a big mercantile family because generally people who engage in trades and mercantile business are very rich. One who, is, one, who, one, one who engaged in the process of self-realization 
or connecting with the Supreme Absolute Truth, but fell short, is allowed to take birth in such a rich family, or he is allowed to take birth in a family of pious brahmanas. Either way, he is guaranteed to appear in human society in his next life. It can be concluded that if someone is not willing to enter into hellish life, as in Tamisra or Anda Tamisra, then he must take to the process of Krishna consciousness, which is the first class yoga system. Because even if one is unable to attain complete Krishna consciousness in this life, he is guaranteed at least to take his birth in a human family. He cannot be sent into a hellish condition. Krishna consciousness is the purest life and it protects all human beings from gliding down to hell to take birth in a family of dogs or hogs. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the third canto, 30th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Description by Lord Kapila of Adverse Fruity Activities. Hare Krishna. Reality. Check. We'll stop the reading here. It's almost an hour. Heavy stuff. Sober. Sober. This is what it means to get sober. To hear exactly what happens, what the laws of nature are, and what happens when we, even though we can't see it happening, what happens or doesn't happen. So let's have some reflections and because they're going to reject me. <laughs> have a second thoughts, are you? No. <laughs> um. Vicky is going to enlighten us further. I don't think I'll enlighten you. <laughs> um, I had, I, I'm a little confused, so it's a quite a simple question. But is it saying that there is a place called hell with the, there was a number of names within the, the, uh, yeah. the spirit goes to? Or is it saying that you go to a lower life and the whipping and the beating is because you're in that lower life in this planet, in the material world? <coughs> or is it both? both but it's meant to sober us up because I don't know if you noticed it but in the midst of all of that very heavy you know uh, subject there was a very nice few couple of paragraphs which described that it's not that family life is condemned if it is done properly material life no matter whether you're high or you're low or you're left or you're right or whatever you are, material life ends in this condition. And we can see it with our own eyes, but the influence of the material energy is so powerful that we can't see it. Pashatmini pashati. That's the verse or the words in Sanskrit. Pashatmini pashati. Even though you see it, you can't see it. So I, I said, I said, I think I said this either yesterday or the day before, when Yamaraj was tested by, when 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 Yudhishthir was tested by Yamaraj, who's doing all these things to people, <laughs> he's the father of Yudhishthir, and he asked that question. Well, he asked many questions, riddles, kind of like riddles, and he had to answer them in order to get his his brothers back from the apparent death. And he asked him, at final question, what's the most wonderful thing in the world? And he answered that the most wonderful thing in the world is that everyone before us, every single living being and all species of life have died before us, and yet we think we're not going to die. Or we don't think about it. We don't even think about it. We're not allowed to think about it by the modes of material nature. And therefore we just go on our merry way thinking everything's okay 
when the same thing happens to everything, and we've watched it. It's common knowledge. All these things are common knowledge. It's not that, oh my God, you know, it's happening. You just go down to the NHS and sit in the uh, waiting room and just watch. One after another, after another, after another. And mainly older and suffering in many ways. Come up going down the high there's a retirement area. <laughs> Uh, high the way you went to today is uh, largely a retirement area so. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to point out that when I went in for my you know surgery and my, my broken elbow it was high end very nice everything opulent everything and it was the same thing it was a nice try though <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Paul. Dr. Paul wants to enlighten us further. I'm not sure about that, but um, he's going to coach us. Oh, that may be. <laughs> um, it's true, first of all. <laughs> that, uh, you know, I witnessed my dad uh, dying mm. um, three years ago, mm. and I saw that exact process. Mm. It's scary. Yes, when well, you actually watch it happen. Watch it right to the last minute to to he took his last breath and everything that's described there the fear in his eyes and that you know it was just vivid and so that was the first thing it really made a lot of sense from hearing what happens because that was it's quite confusing to watch yeah, yeah but the most important part of this for me is thank goodness I'm in Krishna consciousness because there's not much time that's, right. that's the biggest thing that I really took from this. We don't know. No. Maharaj Preacher no. had seven days. He knew he had seven days. And he agreed to sit for those seven days and hear and do exactly what we're doing right now. Seven days and seven nights without eating, without sleeping, straight on, full on. And got himself to the point where he was fully Christian conscious and then he left his body. I mean, I was... You know, in some ways very fortunate, and in some ways uh, most unfortunate that I was in the room when Prabhupada left this world, and I was looking at his face when he left. And he was surrounded by devotees who were all chanting the holy name of the Lord. And it wasn't just him, I mean, it was especially him, but I have been personally present when many devotees have left this world, surrounded by loving devotees, chanting the holy names and encouraging, you know, the person to, the devotee to think about Krishna and to remember Krishna. And it's very difficult at the time of death, no matter who you are. The process of leaving the body is the same for everyone. So when, when, you have, when you're surrounded, not just by relatives who are going, oh, no, now what? you hurry up you know because you know <laughs> I, you know I'm, I'm waiting to take the, the inheritance and I, I'm, I'm supposed to go somewhere or do this or do that but when you're actually surrounded by loving devotees and this is the test this is the real uh, what's the word yeah the litmus test you know as far as I know I don't know of any devotees who left even devotees who have come and then gone and apparently were fallen. They come back at the end and they're surrounded by loving devotees and they, it, they, it helps them improve their life in the next life. So this may be a sobering experience to all sit here together, you know, and hear this stark description of things that people just don't like to think about. But we all, anybody who's been to a funeral you know that people become a little more sober for a few hours. <laughs> and, and it's much easier to talk to them about spiritual life and about death and all these things at, you know, just after the funeral, especially when the loved one is left. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is the real benefit of, of joining a real family where that where the, the, the relationships aren't based on exploitation of sex or 
or exploitation of any kind or abuse, you know, but it's actually for the purpose of uplifting one another and encouraging one another and, you know, hearing about the pessimistic side of material life balanced with the optimistic side of spiritual life. And in the middle of all that, you know, hellish things we just heard, there was a little, you remember, a little glimpse of the spiritual world where there is family and friends and relatives and happiness, but it doesn't go away. It's not that that's the only difference. It's, it's eternal. It's not temporary. And we all know it. But the material energy is so strong, time is so strong, it causes us to forget, no matter how powerful we are. That's why we're recommended to hear regularly every day. And that's why since I started doing this, I'm telling you, it's been a powerful spiritual experience. You know, to every day read like this and hear the whole thing all the way through. The ups and the downs, the, you know, the positive and the negative. In, in the ultimate positive of the spiritual world when we get to the tenth canto. Pretty sobering, eh, folks? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have some something from the cyberspace. <coughs> from the internet. Um... <coughs> This is from Arindama Das. Oh, Arindama. He just got initiated by Vaisheshika Prabhu. Arindama Prabhu Hare Krishna. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for such a wonderful nectar. It looks like Yamaraj, but since Yamaraj, it looks like Yamaraj, but since Yamaraj is devotee of Krishna, and he gives punishment when is when oh punishment then is it Krishna's way of nullifying one's karma when one transmigrates through hellish planets? Well, we it doesn't exactly remove it. It it uh, it uses up the sinful reactions. You know they're used up and then allows us to stay for a little while longer in the material world and build up some more good karma or bad karma and then have to come back to this you know miserable place again and again and again that's why it just doesn't make any sense but Krishna consciousness gives us real positive hope first of all we experience it you know right now right at this moment we experience how profound it is to hear something like that I mean, if you read something like that to a bunch of materialists, they'll just protest vehemently, vigorously. You know, how can you read things like this in public? We, we don't want to hear this. Of course you don't, because you're a complete illusion. You don't want to hear the truth. This is the truth. It's meant to sober us up so we become serious about spiritual life. It's like in one of the descriptions that we just heard, it's described that, you know, the, the soul is covered by, the, the subtle body of the soul is covered by a very, very subtle body that's not as subtle as the subtle body, but not gross, like the gross body, and allows one to go through these conditions and not die, you know? And it's all arranged, and it's happening in a very short period of time. You know, we're thinking, oh, how horrible, but it's a very short period of time. I mean, just just to put everything to proper perspective, we may f feel affronted. How could God cause such suffering? You know? But then when you put it in actual proper perspective in terms of time and space, you know, all of this is going on, millions and millions of births, just by the out-breath of Mahavishnu and the in-breath of Mahavishnu. And Krishna, in the spiritual world, it's not even a blink of the eye, all these things. 
You, we go through millions and millions of births of these things, and it's not even a blink of the eye for Krishna. So while we think it's such a horrible thing, when we go back to the spiritual world, it's just like we woke up from a dream, a bad dream. Just like when you're dreaming and something very bad is happening to you and you wake up, you feel so relieved, you know. And it seems like it was very bad. You know, the feeling you have of, you know, missing your train or your plane and getting stranded somewhere without, you know, all these kinds of things that happen in dreams and worse or, or better, you know, but they all happen, you know, if you read the electrical impulses in the brain, it's just a moment. Therefore, most people, if they're sane, they don't take so much, you know, stock in dreams, and after a few minutes, you forget it, then you're okay. Even though it, it may have appeared to be a very hellish thing. So millions and millions of lifetimes of these things, to Krishna, is just like a bat in the night of to, to eternal time. It's nothing. But time gives us this sensation, you know, of spending like 100, what, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I think the, the oldest, every, every few minutes, the oldest person dies. <laughs> you know, it's usually around 111, 112, maybe up to 120 maximum, something like that. Bhagavatam says average of 100 years this life, human life, Kali Yuga. And it's not even a blink in the eye, not even insignificant, completely insignificant. But we're thinking it's all significant. And therefore these passages we are very weighty and very sobering and very shocking. You know. So we all have, we always have to put these things into proper perspective. Krishna is very kind to make the material world like it is, so we won't think that we can stay here forever, and so we have an opportunity to wake up, hear the Bhagavatam, wake up, wake up, but they don't say that. Wake up. That was like. That was back in the 60s and 50s. That's before your time. Hare Krishna. What else? We have a bunch of sobered up persons in this room now. Paul's I, think, say um, something. I think it also hearing what I've heard and understanding what I know is that it will enable it enables me to have compassion mm -hmm. for other people so much more exactly you know You see it, but you can't see it. Took my watch back, so I don't have the time. What's the time? Oh, it's early. What else, folks? We could move on, if you want. Then I'll read you what birth is like. We just heard what death is like. Now we're going to hear what birth is like. And it's very scientific. It's confirmed even by medical science, what happens in the womb. Oh, the joy. The little bundle. <laughs> we were all a little bundle once. 
<laughs> a little bundle of joy. <laughs> well, Ishupanishad says you have to understand both sides, you know, in order to be soberly, you know, realize what material existence is. You have to understand the spiritual and the material, you know, to get a balanced view. And how kind Krishna is because he accompanies us through all this. You know, we, we're making him have to watch all this. You know, because, you know, he doesn't force, not to force it to anything, but he does it out of love for us. No matter what kind of condition we get ourselves into, he's right with us. What kind of friend is that? How many friends do you have that will do that? Be with you through thick or thin. Life after life, if necessary. And we would do, you know, really desire something, but he arranges it, sanctions it. Um, yeah. when, I, when I went uh, uh, on my search for the absolute truth, <laughs> The first thing that you know naturally comes up is the Bible, mm. and uh, so there there is the idea of the eternal damnation that mm. hell uh, one goes eternally thrown in the lake of fire. Yeah, and there's no coming back. <laughs> and um, it, it was it was uh, very reassuring when you I only get one chance. Yes, yeah, one life. And then either heaven or hell, and that's it. I couldn't accept it. Yeah. There was absolutely no way. Yeah. And uh, even just with the the idea of God is love, because that's also in the Bible, mm. it just doesn't fit with eternal damnation. But um, when I came across the the Bhagavatam philosophy that hell is, you know, just while you learn that your actions are not the right ones then it, it, it made so much sense mm -hmm. and also one thing in the Bible that people are blaming a, an outside um, force the evil or devil mm -hmm. that making them do th things like that and and the, you know it's Adam's and Eve's fault and whatever well they want to take credit when they get some something <laughs> good happens to them Right, they yeah. want to take credit when something good happens, and then we bl blame God when something bad happens. It's such a and we're wondering why it's going on the way it is, you know, with that mentality most that pe most people have. So take heart, take heart. There is a spiritual world where all the forms are eternal and there is no question of the kind of suffering that we just heard about mm -hmm. in the spiritual world. So take your pick. Prove it. Okay, you can't prove that. Well, prove the other. You can't prove that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, at least we'll, you know, we might as well take the one with a chance that there's some eternal life and in full knowledge rather than zero or, or you know, eternal hell. doesn't make much sense not to take Krishna consciousness seriously. Radhika, were you going to say something? Yeah. <clears throat> Sham Kishore is going to say something also, I think. Yeah, we are understanding here that uh, Krishna, we know, in fact, Krishna is all-powerful and he is all-merciful. Yet we find that the way out of the material world is, is difficult. It's very hard to get out of here. 
En... Um, no. It's not hard to get out of here. It's hard to stay here. I know. It's easy to get out of here, but it's hard to stay here. And because of that delusion, because of that illusion, we stay here. Hmm. Yeah. Hare Krishna. It's as easy as that. <laughs> it's as easy as that. But when, when but staying here is oh, really difficult, and we've just gotten a bird's eye view of how difficult it is to stay here. To stay here, birth after birth after birth, and pay for all the things and enjoy all the other things, you have to pay dearly. And and to 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 go out of the material world is easy. Krishna's made it easy, especially Lord Chaitanya made it so easy. Just hear like this and chant Hare Krishna together and take Krishna Prashadam, chant and dance. It's easy. But the difficulty is that we're resistant. The difficulty comes from our resistance, our internal doubt and resistance. That makes it difficult. Mm. But, but it's not difficult to go back to God here easiest thing we're just we're just insanely in t- attached to the difficulty and the suffering and we're thinking the suffering is enjoyment hmm. sorry we made a no it's fine it's good I, I, I like to, to express a thought further for more clarification your, sure. your point answer sure. sure that we know Krishna is just our well-wisher, our friend, and in loving, sweet, performing, you know, such a simple, in one sense, like a simple living he has, you know, in Vrindavan. And it's, some, and it's all powerful. <clears throat> and sometimes the doubt comes in the mind, well, if he could, he can change things, you know, why he doesn't change things, you know? <clears throat> Because so many people are forced by the. He doesn't assume the, 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 all these reactions of the people. We are. We chose it. This is the whole purpose of material existence. Is to the truth of material is we chose to come we wanted to come here we wanted to live separately with Krishna he's doing it out of his kindness to show us what it means to live separate from him we chose it he doesn't choose it he doesn't want us to suffer like this but that's illusion that's that's ignorance to think that God who is all powerful and he's there watching us the whole time he's the Paramount he's the super soul watching And he's there until we turn our face to him. And as soon as we do, he takes us out. And when he takes us out, we live eternally. There's no, no need to come back to this material world. If we take him for his word. Hmm. If we take, it, take him for our word, <laughs> or we think, you know, how he is, imagine how he is, you know, but if we take him at his word, then we can understand, and then we can want to come back to him. And all of us have this experience who have taken to Krishna consciousness. When we're with Krishna chanting and hearing, you know, uh, it's so blissful. And it, we get a taste and a happiness that we haven't experienced in this material world. That's his kindness. And then if we, you know, forsake him, you know, he doesn't forsake us. He's still with us, and as soon as we want to uh, choose him, he's right there. And it wouldn't be possible to become free from this material existence unless he was. So that's the answer. How can God be so cruel? How could you be so stupid? 
<laughs> Two ways of looking at it. I'd rather I'd rather listen look, look at the at the last ladder, or look at both the sides in that way. Taste. That's quite a right. You're just confirming all the things that we've been hearing. <laughs> this, this is what we've got. And then they say, no, no, we're free. But when nature calls, that's it. And can anyone stop that? No. But they're thinking they're free. Pashtan apani tat You see, but you can't see. It's right there in front of you, but no, I'm free. You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me there are laws. No, no, we're going to conquer these laws. I mean, it's just so stupid. <laughs> Therefore, you can't take the Krishna consciousness and stay stupid. Not possible. And therefore, Krishna trains us how not to be so stupid. That's the purpose of all these things we're hearing about. This is a reflection. But I remember when uh, I used to do the, we, we were doing the pubs, you know, that I could see is, I was getting some mercy while doing the pubs that the veil of Maya, the curtain of Maya was unveiling and it was, and I was seeing actually how people had rejected Krishna, you know, very clear, rejected, rejected, you know, yes, yes. and the suffering of the world, you know, as the only means to kind of get the message across to certain people. So it's not, it's actually Krishna's love. It's not that he's cruel. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was, I, I, who was it who told me this story? It happened in America, and there was, uh, oh yes, it just happened recently. An Indudumal Maharaj organizes this, uh, what did he call it? Viva Cultura. Viva Cultura, where he has these fantastic stage performances where, you know, it's all the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra or something or so there was this one Indian girl who was real conservative and, how do I say, she was the real pill, you know. And she, she made this huge complaint that this was like irreligious because the, the costumes were not proper and this was not proper and that was not proper. And because she made such a big stink about it that they had to stop it. Just one person. And in in America, there, there's the, the atheists are getting the voice now. You know, the the fascists are getting voice now. The atheists are getting voice now, and they're trying to shut down prayers in schools and you know, take off in God we trust off of the off of the dollar. If you think it's bad now, if they take that off the dollar, whoa, we'd be in big trouble, you know. And, and everyone can see, you know, as, as, as the society, as the leaders take God out of the picture, and the more they take God out of the picture, the more hellish things become. And they're thinking that they're making it better because we have this and this and, you know, all these facilities. Take a photo, click, push a button, send it halfway around the world to my parents or my relatives, and we're thinking we're God, practically. In the meantime, the whole planet's just disintegrating, you know, in front of our eyes. And even though all of the countries of the world are trying to stand up, this guy Trump is just no. We don't. We're out. We're not. We're not going to participate in this. You know, and they're the ones that are using such a huge percentage of the natural resources. It's like that. That's material nature. There's so much resources, and by mismanagement, you know, a few are getting practically everything, and most people are getting less and less, and some even nothing. 
in San Francisco, California, which is one of the most opulent cities in the world, the poverty level, po poverty level of income is $116,000 a year. If you're making $116,000 a year, you're in poverty. And many of them are on the streets. They can't get a place to live. Because you get a place like this, like a half of this, just a half of this, and it costs $4,000 a month. New York, Tokyo, Hong Kong, London. London's not as expensive as these other places. These other places are like, out. Tokyo is like, all because of mismanagement. And mismanagement means godlessness. Not, not willing to just follow the laws of nature. They've got to try to conquer the laws of nature. And then they, you know, they think they've conquered it and the whole city burns down. Or they, there was just an explosion. You read about this? In New York City, there was a, one of these power things grid it just blew up and it put a light a blue light over the whole city and everybody thought there were alien beings <laughs> coming to take them away you, know? <laughs> you watch too many movies you know <laughs> too many too many too many computer games you know and they saw this light and everybody thought that was it you know the the aliens are coming to get us now <laughs> Hare Krishna Anyway, thanks to the Srimad Bhagavatam, thanks to the Association of Devotees who are willing to sit down and hear that, what we just heard tonight, together, to be sobered up together, and then hear afterwards why it is, why that's there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, the truth. You can't sober up unless you have the truth. One more reflection. Go ahead. Go for it. This is again from Arindamadas. He says, Speaking of these topics of death, how would Krishna help his devotee if the devotee was sincere all his life to remember him? If the devotee is not able at the final moment of death, since death looks like a moment of transition. Krishna forces his way into the heart of such a devotee. If you try sincerely to chant Hare Krishna your whole life, and for some reason you can't chant at the moment, Krishna forces his way into your heart. That's the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. You know, the, the pure devotee of Krishna is so dear to Krishna because he dedicates his life to trying to help others come to Krishna, which is what Krishna wants. That's his dear most desire. He's so dear to Krishna that whatever he promises, Krishna feels obliged to fulfill. And Krishna, he controls everything. So there's no question of his not being able to fulfill someone's desire. So Prabhupada told us, if you chant 16 rounds, get initiated, chant 16 rounds every day without fail, try to avoid offenses, and follow these four regulative principles, no illicit sex, no meeting, no gambling, no intoxication, then you will go back to Godhead. He promised us that. And it, it sounds easy, but not that many can do it. And even, even if you slip, if you get yourself back together and then follow strictly till you die, Krishna will force himself into your heart. If you, if you join this movement and dedicate your life to helping others uh, come to Krishna consciousness and, and participate in the different activities of the Christian conscious movement 
then Bhakti Vinod Thakur will come, take you by the hands, take you back home. This is not just a platitude, this is not just a hyperbole, this is reality. And we've seen it. We've actually seen it. I have God brothers and God sisters who have gone away for some reason by weakness of bad habit or the strength of the material energy and have fallen into actually very degraded condition. But at the end, because of that association with Prabhupada, they've come back and ended up having an exalted departure. Many. Because that's real love. When chips are down and you're going to leave your body, the devotees come around you and chant into your ear as loud as they can. That's the practical demonstration of what we're talking about. How Krishna will appear, you know, in the form of the holy name, chanted by a friend, a real friend, a pure devotee of Krishna. Okay, I'm going to stop here. i got to travel tomorrow. Uh, we won't be tomorrow. We skip one night because we're on a long-haul flight. And then we'll see you uh, Sunday night, uh, 6.30 or 7, uh, uh, Houston time, which is 5 o'clock England time. No. No, 12 o'clock. Sorry. Yeah. Midday. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We got some sober ecstasy. I'm, I'm seeing all the faces here in the room smiling and their eyes are blissful after hearing that. How is that possible? If this isn't transcendental, not possible. Judge a thing by the results. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, samabeda bhakti vrinda ki All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Go Premanandi. Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow, uh, Sunday night.